it's my great pleasure to introduce Nobel laureate and uh, a good friend, Kip Thorne. Thank you, Anton. It's a real pleasure to be here. Uh, I have a very soft spot in my heart for uh, Anton and Micah and Isit and this part of the world. And uh, so I'm really, my wife and I are, are enormously enjoying being here, being here for a few days. Can we turn the lights down now so we can see the screen better? Can we turn the, turn the lights down? Okay, that's great, that's good. Okay. So I'm going to begin by telling you a little bit about how this movie was made. Uh, the story begins with Carl Sagan, who was an astrophysicist, but also a, a filmmaker and himself and a TV star, uh, who was a personal friend of mine. And he called me up in 1980 and said, there's a woman in Hollywood who would like to have a blind date with you. It's a, a phrase some of you may know. It's a date where uh, you get together uh, for the evening, although you have never met before. And so we did, and her name was Linda Obst, and she was just starting her career as a movie producer and uh, became a very successful movie producer. She did a number of well-known movies including contact uh, with, uh, with Carl Sagan, for example. And uh, she uh, and I went out on a date, and uh, we found each other very interesting, but uh, the romance did not go anywhere. She was uh, too much, uh, too uh, intense for me, and I was too much of a nerd for her. But uh, we uh, did become very close friends, and 25 years later, in 2005, uh, Linda phoned me up and said, would you like to brainstorm with me for a movie? And uh, I uh, thought about it for about one millisecond. And uh, I uh, decided, yes, that would be fun to do a movie with uh, Linda. I'd never been deeply involved in a movie before. And uh, I might be able to inspire people about science through this movie. And so we developed a treatment for the movie that we called Interstellar. And the treatment is a description of the story, of the characters, and in our case, of the science that would be built into this movie from the beginning, uh, tightly integrated into the movie. And that is how this it, treatment differed from other uh, treatments in Hollywood. Uh, and so, uh, it, the following uh, February, uh, Linda brought on board Steven Spielberg to uh, direct the movie. And uh, Steven and I uh, got together. I'm sorry. Woo. I think we have a bit of a problem. That, that is really remarkable. Never seen that before. It's just... Uh, I don't know what, I'm going to, re, re, <laughs> okay, I, let me start over again here, here. okay, okay, and uh, I said to Stephen when we got together that first time, that I would like to do a movie in which there were guidelines that nothing in this film will violate firmly established laws of physics or well-established knowledge of the universe and speculations about poorly understood physical laws and speculations about the universe will arise from real science. Stephen was enthusiastic to do a movie that way. He had never done a movie in this, this kind of a manner, so we were often moving forward. And so Stephen and uh, Linda brought on board on, in January 2007, Jonathan, or Jonah he's called, Nolan, 
to uh, be the screenwriter for this movie. And uh, Jonah uh, read many relevant science books, popular science books that I gave to him to give him some background about the science in the movie. And he brainstormed with me for the science in the movie just uh, as uh, Linda and I had brainstormed together. Uh, between 2008 and 2010, he wrote three drafts of the screenplay. But then on June 8, 2010, Steven Spielberg dropped out. Uh, Spielberg has a very different style than uh, some other movie makers. He carries along in the early creative phase more movies than he, he can possibly make. And when he gets to the point of uh, just before pre-production, he makes the decision which movie he will actually make himself, and then he will let you go find somebody else to direct your movie if he doesn't choose it. He chose to make the movie Lincoln, about President Lincoln and the freeing of the slaves, and not to make Interstellar. And so we were left for two and a half years with no director on this movie. However, Christopher Nolan, the brother of Jonathan, or Jonah Nolan, he had told us uh, very early on that if Spielberg dropped out, he might want to uh, become the director. He knew Spielberg's style. But, uh, uh, but uh, Christopher Nolan's style was completely different. Christopher Nolan would never commit to a movie until he, six months after he had finished his preceding movie. Then he would look carefully at his options and make a decision. And so he had to finish his movie about the, the Dark Knight uh, Rises, a uh, Batman movie, uh, until, and he had to finish that off before he made a decision. But he did make a decision then and decided he really did want to do Interstellar. Uh, Spielberg said to us at that point, he said, you got the right director for your movie. And I think it's absolutely true. Spielberg, I had gotten to know him rather well. He had made science fiction movies previously. I don't think Spielberg was anywhere near as enthusiastic about uh, Interstellar as, as Christopher Nolan. And I, just from working with the two of them, I really am convinced that uh, Christopher Nolan made a much better movie from it than uh, Steven Spielberg would have. Christopher Nolan is interesting. He has a strong science intuition, but it's all based on browsing the web and not having had a science training. But he knows a lot about science from browsing the web. He accepted my guidelines, as he said, to the extent they do not get in the way of making a great movie. He was afraid I would be, he played the role of a policeman to tell him what he could do and what he couldn't do. And I was afraid he would take the movie in some crazy direction that was totally violated the science. But as we started to talk with each other, we quickly uh, came to appreciate that uh, we were, both had the same goals, we both had the same tastes. We really wanted to stick to the science, we really wanted to make a great movie. And uh, this turned into a really a, just a fantastically wonderful collaboration. Uh, Chris brainstormed with me on the science through three more drafts of the screenplay. And the final screenplay then and movie preserved Linda's and my science vision, but they changed the story and the character in major ways. That means that Interstellar is really the Nolan's movie. It's not Linda's and my movie. But the science uh, that is embedded very deeply here is my science tweaked by the Nolan brothers and some interesting science ideas that the Nolan brothers brought into it as well. I, I wrote a book about the science of Interstellar. I only decided to write that book while the movie was uh, being filmed. It was already in the, in the filming process. But it, it seemed to me that this was a tremendous opportunity. And so I spent four months writing this uh, book. And it had to be published the same day as the movie was released. But uh, I was not allowed to, and the publisher was not allowed to let the world know that there was a book connected to the movie. Because uh, Emma Thomas, uh, Christopher Nolan's wife, who became the lead producer on the movie, she was afraid that if people knew there was a book about the science in the movie, they would think that the movie was too complicated for them to go see 
And so they, they wouldn't go to the movie. 